crossover explores the spectrum of hybridized Chinese identities to reveal the complexities behind a frequently stereotyped culture. Beginning with the arrival of thousands of laborers during the California gold rush, Chinese people have crossed over to America in search of better economic opportunities. Yet they have simultaneously struggled with marginalization, facing yellow parole ideology, race riots, and legal barriers like the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, which for decades barred the immigration of ethnic Chinese from entering the United States. Throughout the 20th century, political revolution and rapid modernization produced cultural shifts in both China and Taiwan and led to fraught relations between the two. Today, as China positions itself as a modern global superpower, people with Chinese heritage find themselves making choices in everyday life to preserve and pass down their cultural traditions, transform them, or simply let them fade. I was born in West Lafayette. My dad was teaching at Purdue in aeronautical engineering, and there were very few other Chinese kids. We were raised mostly around Americans. My dad had some Chinese students, mm -hmm. so he would invite some of them over for a Chinese student club, but we couldn't relate to the Chinese-born Chinese. You pick up so much from the culture that you're growing mm -hmm. up in. I had a fair amount of conflict, so I always felt a little bit misplaced, like I didn't know which kind of person I wanted to be like. And the most comfortable that I ever felt was when we, in high school, our parents created this organization called Meizhong Jiaying, American Chinese Association, and they sponsored the Chinese family camp. We hung out with all these ABCs, as we call them, American-born Chinese, and those were kids that we, you just had this wonderful common ground of understanding. My parents, they had to move constantly to avoid combat and bombing mm -hmm. than to come to a really different culture and try to make a new life. It's very, very brave. They wanted us to fit in, which is something that made them actually not speak enough Chinese to us. I think it's really different from the Chinese that are have come to the U.S. more recently. I had to just suppress my Chinese side for a while, but then after my son was born, it just sort of all came flooding back to me, my lineage and my heritage. And having a baby made me think vertically. So I thought about what I wanted to pass on and who my parents were and who their parents were and what that lineage is. The first thing I said to him is, you look really Chinese. <laughs> You're a little Chinese boy. Of course, my husband is Caucasian. My parents had come out for the birth, and I just developed a new appreciation for cultural heritage. If you understand how culture creates a whole way of thinking, if you understand how different cultures have that larger worldview, I think it can be very helpful in creating peace and dialogue and coexistence. Water in thousands of rivers reflects the same moon. A sky cleared of clouds lets you see clarity of 10,000 miles. Water splashes, droplets fall onto the leaves. Tonight, every leaf has the moon's reflection. My mother is Caucasian and my father is born in Vietnam, but the bloodline is Chinese. And growing up, I've always looked a little bit ethnically ambiguous. Sometimes I look more Asian, sometimes I look more Caucasian. People would come up to us and ask if we were actually biological to our parents, thinking that we were both adopted. People sometimes don't realize how sensitive that question is when you're asking it in front of a child. A lot of people have asked me, oh, are you Mexican? Oh, are you from the Philippines? Oh, are you 
from Lebanon. And it's more like they're accusing me of a race rather than just asking me, oh, what's your heritage? My grandfather was very proud of being Chinese and he only allowed his children to speak Cantonese in the household. So he was really into Chinese culture while my father and his brothers and sisters growing up in Vietnam, you can't help but absorb the culture of Vietnam. So there's this weird struggle there of, well, are you Vietnamese or are you Chinese? No one ever sat me down and explained that. And I just took it all as like, okay, this is, this is just my identity. These are the rituals we go through. Prior to the Qing dynasty, cobalt was not used in China. During the Silk Road, what is now Turkey, brought cobalt over to China to import blue and white. And that's when the Qing dynasty started using blue and white. So cobalt in itself isn't a Chinese material. It was just adopted and then really refined by the Chinese. And I think that's extremely interesting now that we're globalizing, using digital technology to globalize as well, this kind of silk road that's happening online. The Dutch have Delftware. There's so many different versions of blue and white. I think it's wonderful. My whole life has been extremely international. My marriage wouldn't exist without the internet. It was always talking online. We had a long distance relationship for five years and Skype and FaceTime were our only modes of communication. So it's, I have so much respect for the internet and I would not have my life or lifestyle without it. China has changed so fast. It's too fast for me. I still really like my childhood, the, the experience with like I'm, I'm really close to nature. Voting was unique because it's a lot of things, especially we are in art college. So there are a lot of problems we are talking about in the school. And it sh also shows in, in the city. It's about gender and identity and the race, but it helps me to understand U.S. or understand this world. It's so real. If we go to the New York, we went to the San Francisco or Los Angeles. It's more like a city living beautiful bubble, but it's like fancy and beautiful, and they only show their good side to you. But in the in the Baltimore. It's different. It's mixed. China has the environment is really not good. But why? In China, we are not like this. And then I start to think about like a different generation and the, what kind of people they move to there. Maybe first or second generation, they move to there because of the war. Then they be move to there because of the war or something like a cultural revolution. And people move to there. They have to survive. They go there. They build that kind of place, and uh, because of they are in the white Western world, they are not majority. Our generation, we move to there. The people can go there because we are rich. Everything happened. It's always related to history, and everything we talk, we have to find the reason, and the reason is, it's about all those things happened before.